come here all the time, like with our friends. We'd go canoeing and swimming and a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, it was it was like our last big thing right before we went back to school, and but mm. we really can't do it anymore. Yeah, now it smells horrible and there's signs up. Yeah, you can't yeah. even swim here anymore. It doesn't feel mm -hmm. safe. Well, we didn't even, you couldn't even go out in the water. It was so bad last year. It's, you don't even want to put your feet in. And uh, in fact, last year, the algae was so thick, you couldn't even put a boat in. You wouldn't have been able to go. Uh, it, was, it was just uh, disgusting. I mean, we had, we had fish coming up on the beach. The big uh, sheephead were trying to jump out of the water because they couldn't breathe. I have a dog and I don't take her out in it anymore because she gets sick every time she's home. She's out swimming. She drinks the water, of course, which is naturally. She either has diarrhea for days, she throws up, which is really too bad because it's such a beautiful lake, but it is so polluted now. What you're seeing in our lakes is blue-green algae. It has a consistency and looks a little bit like pea soup. And normally algae is always in the system, but in slow-moving waters that are warm and shallow with an abundance of nutrients, the algae grows rapidly. Algae needs nutrients to grow, in particular phosphorus. Phosphorus comes from a variety of sources including sewage, septic tanks, and waste management systems. Other sources include lawn fertilizers, detergents, and agricultural runoff. Everything that we do ultimately places these materials into the water course. So what we put on our lawns, what we put on our driveways, what we put into our washing machines, what we put on our agricultural fields, uh, it all ends up in stormwater. It all ends up in the conveyors, the Kennard River to the Great Lakes. And it affects us all eventually. Blue-green algae can irritate your skin and cause severe damage to your liver and nervous system. If you eat fish or drink water containing high levels of these toxins, you could become seriously ill. Even just swimming in this water can cause skin and eye irritations and other harmful reactions. If toxins are at a level higher than 1.5 parts per billion, which is the regulated limit under the Ontario Drinking Water Standards, uh, then we need to inform uh, Spills Action Centre, or the MOE, uh, and also the health unit and then the health unit will then determine what uh, actions the public must take. Well, we as communities need to be more aware of our actions and ultimately we need to uh, make sure that less nutrients goes into our lakes and rivers and we can do that a number of ways. We can do that by um, naturalizing our shoreline properties, we can do that by using phosphate tree detergents, we can uh, make sure that our septic uh, systems are maintained and managed properly. In the 1960s, Lake Erie was declared dead and the International Joint Commission brought together Canada and the U.S. to tackle the problem and bring Lake Erie back to life. Today we're facing the same kinds of problems and the Commission is bringing together both countries, the best scientists, the stakeholders and the public to tackle the problem and bring Lake Erie back to life. And this is through the Lake Erie Ecosystem Priority. Through the Drinking Water Source Protection Committee, uh, the committees are looking at uh, policies uh, to bring into place that will protect water, again, at the source. Uh, by reducing the amount of pollutants uh, going into the receiving streams. A couple of years ago I was out shopping for a lawnmower and uh, I noticed they had one specifically for mulching. So I, that's what I decided to get. For one thing you don't have to rake and then secondly it puts nutrients back into the lawn. I've started to grow fescue grass which is a finer leafed grass than normal lawn but it has very deep roots and doesn't require irrigation, doesn't require fertilizer, so it's very environmentally friendly. Phosphorus testing is, a, is an important element. Um, controlling stormwater, controlling runoff, controlling erosion, so uh, rain barrels and uh, rain gardens and all of those kinds of things that, that, deal with, uh, that deal with keeping water on the land for as long as you can. Yeah, we always thought like someone more important, I guess, would come clean the to mess up for us or something, but there's also little things that everyone can do. You'd like go to the car wash instead of washing the car on your driveway where all the water just gets washed away? Yeah, kind of like in a rain barrel. I mean, you always think that there's like this huge solution that's got to be done, but I mean, it's just little things that we can all do to help out.